So we're very excited to um, have everyone here today. My name's Julianne Quay. The reason that we do this is because VFAL's mission is to connect and empower global youth. And our goal is to make you all superstars and make you feel safe and strong and create an environment where you can be the best you that you can be. Um, and part of that is sometimes having conversations about things that are not cool and that, you know, might be a struggle. And, you know, we've, we've, so we have our program called VFILES Academy and we're partnering, you know, we're in partnership with the Robin Hood Foundation, which is, um, has been a very special foundation for my family for a long time. And they are the biggest donors in New York City for everything. So if you've got a problem, they can fix it. Um, Wes Moore, who is the CEO of Robin Hood, is not able to be here today, but we have Sister Paulette in his place. Okay? Yay. Sister Paulette is a nun. My friend and I from school, 13 years in a convent, we have nun kind of issues, <laughs> but, we, but we love nuns. Um, <laughs> but she's a badass nun. Badass nun. With all due respect. With all due respect, there's a badass. I was a nun in my school, Sister Annunciata, and she was not working for me at all. Um, <laughs> Wait a second. I need to get a word in edgewise. I said, when I got a phone call from Robin Hood, well, I can't be Wes Moore. I don't look like him. I don't act like him. But I could be me. So that's how I'm here. I'm here right. as me. And... I never taught in Catholic school. Okay, fine. <laughs> fine, you're free. I won't have my issues with you. Um, so, let's get on to it. I'm going to introduce everybody and then I'm going to hand it over to Laura and Leah, who I was so honored to be a part of their podcast, Improper Etiquette, um, a few months ago. And they have inspired me to be even a bigger version of me um, and to really, you know, as a girl who has, who's a CEO of a company, and I love all the boys that are here for coming, but I'm just gonna say as a girl, yes, the boys that are here, there are special boys in this world, and we need to love you and be grateful for you, and thank you for all your support, because the world that we live in is sometimes not fair, um, and I've experienced that a lot, and I'm sure you have, I'm sure the boys too have experienced things that are not fair. But what we want to talk about today is how to be powerful and strong and stand up for you and what you believe in. And so we couldn't have a better group. So Leah and Laura, improper etiquette. Laura as well, Hot 97. I don't know how she controls those guys every morning, but you do an <laughs> awesome job. Rico just dropped an album. We are. <laughs> We are so honored and inspired. Your hair is so major as well <laughs> to be here. Thank Amelia, you. a spiritual guru. <laughs> Can keep us on the straight and narrow when we're really like, you know, don't know what to do. And Paulette. Paulette is responsible for, I can't even tell you how many organizations serving homeless youth, homeless girls, girls that may have been abused, Girls that just need help, girls that need friends, girls that need you, Paulette. So I'm gonna hand it over. Thank you so much for coming. Just know that we are very grateful for you from all our VFILES family. And afterwards, we will have a Q&A um, section and these guys will run it. So thank you so much for coming. Hi, everybody. First, okay, my name is Laura Stiles, and I just want to say welcome. I want to thank every single person from taking time out of their day to join us today. I see a lot of incredible women that I admire in the crowd today. Venus, hi, honey, hi, Lola, and all these amazing women that, are, that I've seen in passing that have been working hard. And with Improper Etiquette, our podcast, we always wanted to highlight all the amazing women that inspire us. I, I, and like Julie said, I just want to give a shout-out to all the amazing men who are here supporting us, because I, 
listen, do, I don't even know where I would have been if I didn't have these incredible men that have held me down in my career also. So it's only fair that I say thank you and I appreciate you. And we all do because we all have strong men that have played pivotal roles in our careers and in our lives. So totally. it means so much to see your faces here supporting these conversations. <laughs> so... When Leah and I decided, but like, you know, to start our podcast in proper etiquette, we were like, all right, cool. You know, we have so many badass bitches that really keep the fire lit. You know what I mean? That keep us, it, you know, going. We would have these conversations that were, you know, uncensored. And I'm not really used to that because I work in FM radio. And if I start cursing, I'll get a fat ass fine. So <laughs> I was like, dope. You know, me, me and Leah were like, we started off with just talking about, you know, awful dates and, you know, Basically, yeah. sexcapades and all the things that you, you know, I'm sure all of you guys can relate to. But then during our path, we started inviting, you know, women that either inspired me or inspired Leah. Yeah, it, it was interesting because I'm like, well, I have this giant name who's my co-host and I can reach out to whoever I want and kind of use that to get people to come and it worked. That's how I feel. That's what happened, kind of. And from Tarana Burke to Planned Parenthood, Azealia Banks, you know, all these incredible women that, that came to our podcast. And I mean, I was just like so honored to have a lot of these, these women come talk to us. Another thing that, that we're very passionate about is giving back. A lot of us understand that we're very fortunate and uh, we've teamed up with amazing organizations that have done incredible things. Like one is I Support the Girls, where we've held these amazing events where we collect bras and feminine hygiene products for homeless women. And when you think about homelessness, you don't necessarily, you know, when they ask you, can you guys donate a jacket or donate something? Everyone kind of goes to a quick, like, oh, I have a couple sweaters I can donate. I have a couple jackets. But none of us think about bras and feminine hygiene products, yeah. right? And all the women in here know how expensive a damn bra can be, especially if you're not the average size. So when we started really digging deep and learning that a lot of these women in homeless shelters, they don't have bras. They use belts sometimes to try to, like, live their lives and like it's really fucking sad and it's in our backyard it's in brooklyn it's our neighbors it's in you know the bronx it's you know downtown so when we teamed up with that organization we created a fundraiser where we had all these incredible people not men and women come deliver boxes of tampons deliver boxes of pads and gently use bras and new bras and how, how many yeah. pieces did we donate to I, the I shelter think, i i want to say like 10,000 pieces of, of something. And also what we learned, which is interesting, was that a lot of the shelters, you know, if they have government funding, they don't have an allotted amount of money that goes to tampons or pads. So a lot of these shelters will not have that because they literally can't, they're like not allowed to spend money on it. So the reason we're bringing this to the forefront is because these are conversations that I want to have with you guys, and all of you guys have your own little network, and you're very powerful. So today, when you know you leave and you tweet and you post, I want you guys to reach out. And whenever we post an event of collections with all these amazing organizations, whether you come and you show up and you bring just one bra or two bras or you know have a box of tampons, and just think about all the amazing people that are out there that are working really hard who could use our support too, and uh, and. I'm in a special place where I can support other people. So I just wanted to put that out there so you guys kind of like get the idea. Because I learned from organizations like this by panels like this. Because right. I was like, damn, I never really thought about that. You know what I mean? So it's just another beautiful way of us supporting other women. But today, um, we continue to support other women by highlighting incredible stories. And I just want to welcome Rico Nasty. <laughs> First of all, I need you guys to make some more noise because let me tell you, when I picked up that Fader magazine and I saw her beautiful face yeah. rocking. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Something, that that, surreal. something that's amazing about Rico is that she does things her way. She does things the way she wants to do it. She's a mother. She's an artist. She is an incredible soul. So today, you know, it's such a pleasure to be able to sit with you and chat it up with you and tell us a little bit about your story. Well, <clears throat> I really want to start at the beginning before all the music shit, you know, because I'm a regular person. Um, I'm the only child and I grew up, you know, by myself. I made friends when I could. I changed schools a lot. And... Um, 
when I went to boarding school, of course, you know, that was, I was in like, I want to say like the sixth grade, and I stayed there until my ninth grade year where I got expelled. And that entire time frame, I think that was when I really realized that women are smarter than men. <laughs> and that was really hard to come by at such a young age. But um, since I went to boarding school, there was, you know, 40 boys, 40 girls in the entire school. That shit was so weird. Like, really fucking weird. Like, super weird. Like, I went from regular school, public school, so many kids, it's kids that are older than you, kids that are younger than you, so many options for friends, to 40 boys and 40 girls. Um, I'm, I have an androgynous type of look. I don't really think that I'm the most beautiful girl on earth. And when you take this makeup off, you know, we know, but we all have flaws. We all feel like we're beautiful, but we all have flaws. And um, growing up, makeup wasn't really big for me, so I was always the girl who just did, did boy shit. I mean, fuck it, I'ma say it, did boy shit. Like, I was so tired of them trying to make me a cheerleader when I wanted to be a football player. Like, I mean, it was always just the gender roles that I was forced to play in going to a boarding school, so fuck all that. I got myself expelled. And I started public school. And in public school, that was when I really learned about confidence and owning your shit and literally just building your confidence to the point where you can have a fucked up day, you can have a fucked up year, but you bounce back because you love yourself more than you love being hurt. You know what I'm saying? And as women, we get hurt a lot because we're sensitive. It's not our fault. We, we're just, we love everything whenever it lets us. <laughs> it, like, it fucking sucks sometimes. And I really just, I'm excited to talk to you guys because I feel like a lot of people see me as a confident person, as a strong person. And I see a lot of you guys as stronger than me. Sometimes the shit that you guys come to me with, the problems y'all come to me with, is stuff I couldn't even imagine going through. But um, with music, it really helps me get a voice so I can talk to you guys. Cause you're not the only girls that go through this. You're not the only girls who wanna feel strong in a world where you're supposed to feel dainty. And you know, women are all different. It's so crazy how they really try to like, <laughs> they just try to lower us, you know? And especially in the industry, I see it a lot more. I mean, fuck that. I go to the club and they're like, girl, you're not strong enough to push them and shit, so you just gotta take it. Like, this nigga's being rude for no reason. And you look like a chihuahua barking back at someone that's 6'2", so it fucking sucks. People be trying you. And, um, you know, all the while in the world where violence doesn't seem to really have a choice anymore as well, um, it seems like nowadays niggas don't care if you a girl or a boy. They don't care if you young or old. They just don't give a fuck, period. And I want to be the person that tells y'all not to give a fuck back, but the right way. There's ways to not give a fuck, and you hurt yourself in the end. You hurt yourself real bad trying to prove people wrong, trying to prove a point to motherfuckers. But there's also a way where you can prove a point and be positive and heal yourself along the way. Um, I want to hear some of the questions that you guys have for me. But um, other than that, I'm still finding myself. I'm only 21. I am a mom. I had my son when I was 18. Everyone was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I don't even know. <laughs> 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 fuck. But um, that was one of those things that you just, I mean, you gotta put your pants on and do that shit. Like, there's really no other way to do it. When I found out I was pregnant, um, it was too late to have an abortion. It was, you know, really crazy because I was six months pregnant when I found out that I was pregnant. Um, I had went to Europe. I had graduated high school. I had went to prom. Um, I had basically was living my life as a regular kid and before that, my best friend died, who was also my child's father. 
And the person I was with every day for like a year straight, like we did everything together. And we were friends like three years before that, just friends, best friends, because my mom told me to lose your virginity to someone who's your best friend. Um, so when he passed away, it was one of those things where I went back to being the only, only child. I went back to sticking up for myself. You know, when you have a boyfriend, he just like sticks up for you, girl. You just be like, <laughs> fight this nigga with me. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Y'all fuck shit up together, you know. You go through shit together, you heal together, you build together. Yeah. And dealing with something that young, I was like, girl, you're not in love, you know. You don't know what love is. That's what they all, like, my mom, everybody. You know, when I'm first dating him, he sell drugs. He might sell a little bit of weed or whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He always got on designer clothes, so they think he get his money from wherever. But he was a really good kid. He was a good guy. And my mom was just always like, you don't know what love is, blah, blah, blah. Fall in love. He passes away. Months go by. I'm pregnant. So I look at it like, damn, sis, you was about to kill yourself. And you got this. This is the most beautiful thing in the world. And everyone on the internet and everyone in your family and everyone that you went to school with is telling you, abort mission. Because you're young. Because how are you going to take care of it? It's fucked up. I feel like when you're in the position to have a child, you're in the position to make whatever choice you want to make. And my choice was, you know, a lot of people are like, you know, how do you take care of a child? How do you take care of yourself and a child so young? The fact of the matter is, I feel like God doesn't give you anything that you can't handle, and he will put stuff in, in your place, in position, so you can do it. Um, I know some of y'all are probably like, girl, please, this shit, stuff don't fall out the sky. It definitely doesn't. But when opportunities do come to you, it's important that you, you aren't shady, you aren't petty. You just go into everything with good intentions. You go into everything looking forward to being a better person. Like, you shouldn't go into things looking on it in a negative aspect, you know? And that's really, for real, that's what everybody, that's what being a girl is about. Every time you get dressed, people try to look at you in a negative way. Every time you post something, people are looking at you in a negative way. People are putting standards on you that like, fuck that shit, fuck that shit. 20 with a baby, 21 with a baby, 25 with a baby, 25 with six kids, it doesn't matter. All of our parents had kids, y'all. You know, they did Very it. True. You know, they did Very it. Very true. We might be a little bit fucked up, but they did it. <laughs> We're here. Like, it's not, it's not rocket science. You know, they try to break Cardi B down because they say that you can't have both. They definitely try to break me down. Like, you're young as fuck. You definitely can't have both. But you can have whatever you want. Like, this is your world. Like, it's your world. You like the color pink? Save your money and buy a pink house. <laughs> <laughs> You, like, seriously, if you look in the mirror every day and you manifest that shit, bro, it'll really come to life. I, I ask for guidance, like, being a mom. I'm not really close with my mom. How do you be a mom? That loving, unconditional shit, bro, that shit is so hard to learn. But when it comes, it is like, you use it on everything. Like, you use it, when, I feel like once I learned how to love my son, I felt like I learned how to love my haters, like... <laughs> you learn how to love people and forgive people for hurting you because they don't know what they're doing. They don't, they, they don't mean no harm. They're just insecure. They're just territorial. They're just hurt. Hurt people hurt people. But that's why you can't be a hurt person. You can't be. You got to be that positive light for somebody. For somebody. When you just had your baby and you're going through all these things of being like a young mom, you know, just dealing with your relationship with your mother, when was it that you started pushing that energy into being a creative, into creating music? My son always loved music. Like, he was the type of baby who would kick when you put headphones on the stomach. Always. It's really weird. He be dancing and stuff now. Um, with him, it was just like, I wanted to impress him. I just wanted to be like... I wanted to impress him in a sense where he could grow up and 
look at his mom as a badass, but not like an overly sexualized badass. You know what I'm saying? It's okay to be sexy, but I just wanted him to see me as like a strong woman, but I can do a man's job too. You know? Because that's important for your son to see. <laughs> you know, it's, it's incredible because I've had these conversations with countless women from all walks of life, right? How many times have, you know, you've done a job and a lot of times you've done it better. And, and men, please pay attention because sometimes I've heard it from my guys like, oh, here you go with this shit again. But it's the fucking truth. You know how many times we're underpaid, underprivileged, under, I can't even continue to say it, underappreciated, thank you. We could go on and on, but one of the biggest things I see in women that I know that work just as hard, that create movements, that create, you know, huge money making events, develop companies, and I constantly see, you know, women being fucking underpaid, man. And it's a thing where it's like, I, I would wish that I didn't even have to talk about this anymore, right? I feel, I feel like we've gotten to the point where it's like, all right, cool. Like, I've proven that I can do the same thing you can do and better. It's, be it's, it's, because, that, it's because the people who sign the checks are mainly men. And it's easier for them, it's easier for a man to talk about money with a man. And that's why more women need to control money and need jobs at the top which is what Cindy Gallup talks about right, a lot. Right, right, right. Invest in women. It's really interesting because when I see Rico, and um, I've heard conversations behind the scenes in the music industry, and I'm like, how come I don't see any more like, females getting pushed to the forefront? How come I don't see any more female rappers or female artists? And at one point, I remember seeing uh, a friend of mine was like, you want me to keep it 100 with you? It's too expensive. You gotta worry about hair and makeup and drama and it's, it's too much of a risk. I had to turn around and, and be like, wait, cars. what? I swear, it's, we just said it's the same expenses as chains, bottles and cars and strippers. <laughs> <laughs> Amelia, please hold the mic. Guys, Amelia is an incredible human being that we fell in love with when we invited her to our podcast. She constantly sheds light and positivity and has been a gem and probably one of the biggest like inspirations and like she she inspired me to like search deeper you know within my feelings within my me spirituality too. and it's it's not only a pleasure to have her here today but she feels the same way that we all do and she's had to deal with the same amount of bullshit Emila, can you just speak on? Because I, I heard you, I heard you chiming in without the mic, and we need to make sure this audience hears you out. Well, nah, me and Rico has just agreed that that shit costs the same amount as you know chains, bottles, all that other shit. Women often get pigeonholed, even in spiritual walks of practice, and you know things like that, into being more high maintenance, being catty, being more just complicated, and it's something that. It's really shitty because it's something that, why is it that we're not supposed to have this communal aspect with other women in this spiritual practice, but we're supposed to have this whole communal aspect going on with women in every other part of our lives? You know, I, I don't want to have to go seek out a man for my spiritual guidance when I would rather go and find a woman who, you know, I feel like, listen, you feel, you feel me. You get what it is to walk the path that I've had to walk just in general, not even spirituality-wise, but just as a woman. There's been so much stuff in my life that, especially related to mental health and things like that, where as a woman, you know, what I had to say was sidestepped or was dismissed because I was irrational. You know, that's just part of being a woman and, you know, you're just having women's troubles and all this. And it's like, oh, I don't think so. You know, or things about you just feel too much. You're just one of those girls that feels too much. And it's like, you know what? I'm starting to feel y'all don't feel enough because there's too much of this. I'm feeling too much and not enough understanding coming from the other side. And I experienced that a lot with men in spirituality, which was very frustrating for me. I dealt with a lot of that you know, misogyny that we just can't stand and we all think is going to be missing from certain things because we're like, well, that wouldn't be included in this. Why would it be? It's always included somewhere because that shit has trickled into everything, 
you know, I've had men question my prices for my work and my services. And then I see them charging more. I've even had men email me and say, I want to offer you my services free of charge. I normally charge $500, $600, but for you, I'ma make an exception. And I'm like, oh, okay, you seen that follower account and you wanna make an exception all right now. You know what? <laughs> I'm good because the only reason you're offering me this as a woman is because you see the abundance that I can make out of whatever the fuck I touch. Anything I touch becomes fertile, all right? You mad that all you could do is plant a seed, but I'm the one that can make shit grow into a motherfucking garden. I can make an orchard out of one thing, baby. Don't be upset. And I feel that that happens everywhere, everywhere. Every single thing in life, women have faced that. And I do see that men who tap into that feminine energy as well and appreciate that in themselves, they get that shit too. And I'm just like, you know something? I'm starting to feel like y'all just salty that you can't join the party. Like, this <laughs> makes no sense to me because you see these other men able to do it and it's a problem. You see these other women tapping into it and it's a problem. But when women aren't tapping into these things and they aren't feeling empowered and these men aren't feeling empowered by these things, it's okay. Because everybody's docile. Nobody feels like they can go out and make their dreams happen. Nobody feels that they can make changes in the world happen as far as humanity goes, their health, their mental health, all of that shit. Because they just keep taking the power from you and redirecting you to, you need this. You need this one thing. And it's always a man. Why is it always a man? If they also always then fuck up your life half the time. Like, <laughs> and other men will say that other men have done fucked up shit to them too. And that the man is always to blame. They're the ones who run the system. The, the white man fucked the soul. Well, so why y'all not more mad at each other? I'm very confused. <laughs> Like, I just don't know why we focusing on hating women and stopping women from making money and stopping women, you know, and other women, I've noticed we sometimes do it to each other because there's that idea that there's not enough of the pie to go around. If I have a slice, that means there's less to go around for another woman. If another one comes, uh-uh, I'm not sharing my slice with you. All I have is one slice. I'm not sharing that with you. And it's like, yo, if we stop doing that and we decide to come together and figure out how to bake a new damn pie, then none of us are gonna have to sit here and fight over this one little ass slice that they give us to fight over so that none of you ever go for the whole fucking pie or to make your own fucking pie. Like, I'm just saying, like, it's the thing that it happens everywhere. And that's part of why I speak about what I do in spirituality and try to make it accessible for everybody in some form or another, because this is supposed to be something that connects you with a higher power that is your own, not necessarily one that serves the rest of the world, but one that serves you and whatever purpose you are supposed to fulfill and want to fulfill in this world. Like, you know, we ain't supposed to be limited from this shit. It's supposed to work for you, not the whole fucking world and, you know, but you. So speaking of higher power, Paulette, yes. I, you know, and you're dealing with the ultimate patriarchy, yes. the Catholic church. I mean, you know, so I, I have a, a question. It's kind of personal, but I'm really curious. Did you have a calling? And you did. Of course. I hope so, because otherwise I've been wasting a lot of my life. <laughs> okay, can you, tell, can you tell us? I'm really curious about the calling and what okay. happened. So um, I went to Catholic school, and I think I was always impressed with the sisters who taught. You know, in, when I grew up, uh, there were just, um, there were a lot of nuns teaching in Catholic school. That's not really true today. And I just thought that they were so kind and generous. And at the same time, they were really strong women. But more than that, I always felt a spiritual connection to God. And so um, I, I remember when I first graduated from high school and I said to my parents that I thought, because we didn't have any nuns or priests in my family or anything like that. So I said, I, I, I think that I have to enter the convent. And, they looked at me like, mm, I, we don't think so. <laughs> so they said, um, you know, we want you to go to college or get a job or do something. So I went to college for two years, 
and then during that time I was going out with somebody, but I still had that feeling that unless I really tried it, I wouldn't be complete, that I wouldn't, I, I just wouldn't be myself. And so I found this wonderful community, the Good Shepherd Sisters, that work with young people who are really on the margins. Um, we work with young people who live with us in our group homes. We work with young people um, who come to live with us because they've been abused or neglected. Uh, with young people who have been involved with the justice system. Uh, we work with young people who, in the public schools, who are having struggling to get through high school and who uh, we have special programs where they can continue in high school until they're 19 or 20, until they get their high school diploma. So we do a lot of work with young people, I'm sure like many of you. And I just thought that was so cool. As a matter of fact, the first thing um, I, I did when I ran into the Good Shepherd Sisters, I said, really, this is just what I wanted. I wanted to be a social worker. I wanted to help people. And it just seemed right for me. So here I am. Amazing. So you just, I mean, it's, it's interesting because basically, I mean, all three of you have just basically followed your instincts, it mm -hmm. sounds like, through whatever obstacles came your way. Mm -hmm. Emilio, what would you say was your calling when you decided to tap into spirituality and felt like this was the road that you wanted to take? Well, I grew up in all of this bruja, spirituality kind of, you know, stuff, you know, energy work, you know, spirit work, whatever, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, it was something that was very big um, on my father's side of the family, my mother's side, not so much. Um, you could ask my mama about what I do, and her country self will tell you, oh, I just don't know. I, I really, <laughs> I, I know she does good things, but I just, that, I, I stick with my Bible. And I respect that, and she respects what I do. And I have to admit that at a point, I had a lot of resistance towards doing this work because of what I was told so much by so many men in this work. I, after my abuelita had passed away, it was really a lot of men that were in my life as far as spirituality and, you know, elders and things like that. Um, it was something that I got told I had to be one way or another and that was it. And there was no fluidity, there was no gray area, no spectrum, no nothing. I just had to be the so, and that was it. And for me, that didn't work because I'm a Sagittarius and I'm a girl from Brooklyn. What the fuck is that gonna do for me? I don't think so. Like, you know, apparently I had to stop speaking a certain way and I needed to start carrying myself in a way that they felt was more respectful and I asked them well what is it that makes it respectful and a lot of it was simply about removing the fact that I was from the hood that my father was from the hood things like that and it's like you know I don't think so and it took me a while to figure out how to do it exactly my way um, but through being connected with other women um, who are my elders in this work and you know the universe you know I, listen I'm one of those people the universe will do things for you and you know spin webs that you just never even thought was gonna come into you know play but it works out and I met these amazing women who told me that doesn't have to be how you do it you need to do it in a way that fits you and in a way that you feel vibrates the most with your highest vibration. And so I realized, yo, that means speaking to the people who are like me, who are constantly left out of the conversation because we're looked at as too hood or we're looked at as not being righteous enough and things like that. And helping people to understand that, you know what? As far as saints and things go like that, I will never look at myself in that light, but they say that the greatest saints are those who've sinned. And I do feel that that is a lot of what applies to my work, is that the reason why I can empathize with people, even through your fucking phone screen with a 60 second video of breaking something down into something digestible that once seemed so overly complex and you're just like, I don't even know how to explain this shit myself. Like, and I'm feeling it, but I don't know what to say. It's because 
I'm following my way of doing it, not the way that all these men told me I had to do it, you know, in order to be successful or to be seen as somebody who knew what they was talking about and all this stuff. I done met people in this work who, I mean, are in their, like, 80s. And, you know, they tell me, God bless the fact that you don't care because somebody needed to not care in your generation and... I'm down for being that person, you know? I'm glad that I have the same birthday as DMX. Shout out to December 18th for blessing me with a crazy ass energy. I'm thankful. I'm very thankful. It's the reason why, you know what? I can sit here and be, listen, I'm a spiritual ass person, but you know what? I feel, Erica, on all my shit could change real quick to a blunt, you know, a switchblade if necessary. Oh, don't play, like. But do I want to have to go there? No. Does anybody want to have to go there? No. But I am very proud of the fact that I have evolved and that I know what it's like to be there, not necessarily from everybody else's point of view because I'm my own individual person. But I know enough to be able to help you feel like this is for you in your own way. And that's really what it was for me. Like, I just found it by people fucked with my fucking 60 second videos. And I was like, all right, babe, y'all fucking with this? I had been doing sessions prior to that, but I was like, all right, y'all fuck with this? All of a sudden, I had all these people from all around the world wanting to have a session with me. They were like, I just need to talk to you. I'm like, okay, okay all right, we could just talk. I, I do a bunch of other shit, but we could just talk if you want. That's fine, <laughs> you know? And I just do it my way instead of the way everybody else says I'm supposed to. Um, so that brings me to a question I have for Paulette and Amelia. Cause so basically your lives are dealing with other people's problems pretty much. Um, so I want to know what you do for self care and for yourself. Sure. So I, um, sorry. it's on, right? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Well, so I, I, um, I'm an early morning person. I love to get up in the morning. And I, after I have coffee, I just take some quiet time every day to try to connect, uh, to try to connect with God, to try to think about what's before me during the day, um, what I could do better, uh, what I feel like I didn't do a good job the day before. Some people do that before they go to sleep at night. They think about how they spent the day. But by the time I go to sleep, I'm so gone that I just go to sleep. <laughs> I, I, I don't think about mostly. I mostly just go to sleep. But I love that morning time because it gives me time to read. Um, I, I often read uh, the scriptures for the day. Um, so I try to really be focused. I get the gratefulness quotes every day. I don't know if anybody knows about them, but it's a, a quote that comes from a philosopher or a writer or some creative person or a religious person, and it just gives you something to think about. And when you open it up, there's a question for the day. And the question really makes you stop and think. And then if you have time, people respond to the questions. Uh, so every day there's a different question. So the question could be, um, what do you think, um, how do you think you could give back to someone today that you may have hurt? Or um, what's something that happened to you that you would like to share with somebody else? I mean, they're just sort of provocative questions that get you really thinking about who you are as a person and who you want to be as a person. And um, I just love those gratefulness quotes. Where it's, can we find the gratefulness quotes? Uh, I think it's, you know what, I'll send you, I'll send one of you tomorrow morning and then you can you share it You know what, I'm going to put world. it on our podcast Instagram. That's good. Yes, I think you should. Yeah. Great, gratefulness, I think it's gratefulness.org. Calm, but I'm, I'm not really sure. Okay. But you'll, you'll hear from me around 6 a.m. tomorrow I, morning. <laughs> awesome. And Amelia, because um, you're really, you're always, I love your self-care videos. They're my favorite. Thank you. 
Um, I'm very big on doing self-care in multiple ways. I'm big at the whole holistic approach where, you know, you tackle shit from the whole picture. You know, self-care is not just bath, you know, bath bombs and face masks. I mean, you know, that's the fun, cute part. I love that shit, but that's not all of self-care. Self-care is also taking moments to do emotional and wellness check-ins, you know. Mm -hmm. Like she said, you know, those, you know, one, those gratitude cards are great. Things other people I know, um, like to do meditation pull, you know, pull cards. And other times, I know I've started using these mindfulness cards that I really like, and I'll pull three mm -hmm. for the day, and I'll try to make a combination of, you know, them. Because um, tarot is something that, if you don't know it, that's a whole thing you gotta learn. And if you're just trying to get something to give you a little guidance, that may not be where you should first start. You could try with oracle cards, you know. Those are great for meditation pulls. Um, but my biggest thing is baths, and not just for the bath bomb sake, but I'm talking about baths with a whole bunch of ingredients that are gonna wash away everybody's energy from me for the day, you know, and taking the time to really sit and think about it and check in with how do I feel, what is my stuff and what's not my stuff, especially since I deal so much with other people. And I think it's important for everybody to do because we all can take on other people's baggage and take it home with us and end up being more stressed out about something that you might not have been so stressed about in your own personal life that you could have figured out pretty easily had you not been carrying somebody else's stuff. You know, so I encourage people to check in with themselves. What's mine? What's somebody else's? That's okay. so important. Yeah, and to yeah. see, can yeah. I do something about this? Mm -hmm. Okay, I can't. Then I can't worry about this right now. I tell people all the time for self-care especially, worry to the extent that you can do something. If you're worrying past what you're capable of doing, there is no point. In all honesty, you're probably bringing some negative energy towards that thing that was not necessary for you or the situation. And it's just because that's what you're dwelling on rather than thinking, okay, I can't contribute to change this situation and that's frustrating, but I have to accept that and I have to try to send as much energy as I can since I can't physically make a difference or I can't financially, whatever it is. You know, you have to accept and let go and ask that the universe take care of those things because not everything is your thing to take care of. You know, and like I said, taking a real good bath and washing people's stuff off of you and watching it go down the drain and saying to yourself, Goodbye. Like, for real, let it go. That's let so it the satisfying. fuck go. Like, it really is, though. Like, and I if you've agree. ever had a session with me, I have probably given you a bath recipe and or told you to at least take a bath once a week with some salt in it to wash it away because it's necessary. We're all sensitive in one way or another energetically, and it's important that we do maintenance on that because face masks are nice, you know, and pretty bath bombs are nice to look at, but... It's also important that it does more than just that and that you're doing more than just surface work when it comes to self-care. Rico, you have this crazy chaotic life now that you're on the cover of magazines, you're, you know, like you said, I'm already working on the next project. You're already working on, you know, the next and you have a child. How do you balance, how do you keep yourself balanced? Well, everything she said was true. Um, I like baths. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, hotels don't really have baths. Sucks. Um, so what I tend to do to protect my energy is throughout the day when I feel like someone is fucking with me. You know, everyone has notes in their phones. And I don't know if any of you guys do poetry or do music, but I go right in. I go right into the music. I don't let anything stop my emotional process. As an artist, I feel like change is one of the biggest things to help you stay motivated and inspired. And for some people, change is scary as fuck. But I just like to, when I'm by myself, I make a very long mental note of everything that I want to do in the future and everything that might stop me from doing it. I definitely look at the negative side all the time because you got to be your biggest enemy sometimes. It's way better than having a lot of motherfuckers hate on you. You, you got to be your biggest critic. So I protect my energy by literally just being like, 
if you don't feel like doing this, don't do this. Don't bring your shitty ass energy to this fun ass party. Like that ass, like don't do that. Your friends wanna see you, you got a fucking attitude. Don't go, don't, just don't do that. Don't, your friends don't deserve that. The people around you don't deserve that. And plus you have one bad day and then it's like, oh, she's a bitch. Like, you know? Keep your energy private. When you're going through shit, make sure you go through that shit and you give yourself time to heal. Because a lot of us go through shit and we like, all right, you know what? Fuck that nigga up and get drunk. <laughs> like, yeah, but tomorrow you're gonna miss him. Take these two hours to really say fuck this nigga. Like, take your time. Take your time. Take it slow. If you take him back, that's cool, but you know? <laughs> You gotta deal with stuff on your own time. And as a woman, a lot of times people do tell you you're too emotional. You know, oh my God, you must be about to be coming on your period. Like, bitch, I probably am. <laughs> and that makes it even worse. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I'm breaking out. Niggas is acting wild. <laughs> Motherfucking, I posted a picture. I thought it was cute. People are calling me ugly. <laughs> like, <laughs> Do men go through that? No. You post a picture and your shirt's off. Is anyone like, oh my God, nipples. <laughs> She's a whore. Like, no one does that to you. Even being a woman in this business. You know, so many men, look, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Y'all will shoot a video in a white tank top and I'd be so irritated because I wish the fuck I would come on set with a white tank top. <laughs> Y'all will fry my ass the fuck up yeah. with a designer belt on and some Balenciagas. <laughs> Y'all will cook me the fuck up. I wish sometimes we could settle like that. But then again, it's something about being a woman. It's something about y'all don't know how we do this. It's something about that. Y'all don't know how we do it. She's on her period. How are you alive? <laughs> like, they be so concerned. Like, are you good? Yeah, nigga, I'm good. I've been doing this shit. Fuck you talking about. And then you, gotta, and then you gotta deal with, you have World War II going Advil. on inside your body. Your hormones are out of whack and you have to show up and act like everything is normal. Yes. Well, you're, 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 everything is cool. You're a performer, and I often <laughs> think about how someone, like an Olympic runner, what, if, what about the women that go to the Olympics that, that um, compete? Like, how do you run the 100 meter dash and you're, Running Bleeding. for the gold medal, and it's day one. How does that happen? Nah, nah. Let me tell you something. I've had numerous shows where I'm right about to get on stage and the cramps kick in. I've had so many shows, especially like tour, when I went on tour. I was on my period that whole week, so it was just like, I'm ugly, oh, all these people are here, they hate me. And they like literally are your fans. Like they literally came, they paid to see you. And you're like, everyone hates me. <laughs> like that shit is really hectic. But like I said, you gotta keep your energy protected. You always gotta listen to some good music. I like to make the music that I like to listen to. When a bitch calls me, okay, I'm listening to trust issues. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm listening to smack a bitch. I, I really want, you know what I'm saying? I'm listening to that. And it just makes me feel like, damn, I can be a pretty bitch. I can be a, uh, you know, mm, but I can also just be a girl. Like, I'm gonna smack this bitch, fuck it. Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Hair in a bun, don't give a fuck. You know, it's very important to stay true to yourself and not bite off more than you can chew. You know, a lot of people say, you gotta wear wigs and you gotta do this. You gotta have all your nails on. I'm always missing one, if you never noticed. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. They say, yeah, you shouldn't smoke that much. I, am I on camera? I outsmoked Wiz Khalifa. Um, <laughs> Where's my boyfriend? Like, he fell asleep. So what's up? Like, but don't nobody want to talk about that. Like, nah, I'm kidding, but that ass, that really happened though. But you know what I'm saying? It's shit like that. Where you just sit back, you're like, wow, like, it's a lot of people that tell me you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't smell like weed. You know, when I hop out, it dank. You can smell it on me. I'm a very strong marijuana advocate, and I hate when people say, you're too pretty to smoke. Like, what? Oh, or when they're like, is your voice like that because you smoke? I'd be like, no, 
my voice is like this because I'm weird. <laughs> I guess there's a storm coming. I hear everyone's phones are going off. Okay. That's cool. Y'all seen that movie, I Am Legend? I really am scared of New York. Like. <laughs> All right, so we're, listen, we can sit up here and chat it up with these girls all day long, but unfortunately, we have to keep it tight. And I want to give you guys an opportunity to ask questions, because not every day do you get Sister Pauletta, you get Amelia, Rico here. So does anybody have any questions? Questions, that they anything they want to share with us? Um, hi, I'm a question for Rico, so I know that you just hold the other I think, I think my most famous box of today is Angry Black Woman. That's, that's my most famous box. Does she have, she have an attitude problem? And I'm like so nice. Um, another box is Teen Mom. When I'm literally 21, like, um, <laughs> I'm grown, bitch. But, you know, they, they do kind of put you in the box or they try to just... You know, these niggas get posts, like I'm talking to all the blogs when I say this, they get posts when they fucking piss outside. We gotta get everything grouped together, like jam-packed, let's talk about all of them at once. You're not gonna see a series of different women. And that shit is really pathetic because she talked about getting a piece of the pie. And I feel like the reason why all of this is so fucked up is because the women who are at the top know what it took to get the piece of that fucking pie. And ain't nobody gonna take that shit from me. So it makes it hard to share that pie. But you gotta remember that there is more than enough room to go around. Just like these niggas blowing up every day, you, we can blow, I literally made one music video, yo. If you wanna do music, I literally made one music video. No ass, no titties, none of that wild shit, and niggas fucked with it, bruh. Be yourself, don't care. Niggas gonna say, yeah, you too, you too boyish, you too this, like, bro, be yourself. Like, that's, that's literally the best advice I can give. They always gonna put you in the box. It don't matter if you worked at Walmart. You worked at Walmart, you gonna be the bitch who, oh yeah, she only does this. Like, fuck that, bitch, I do it all. Like, fuck you. <laughs> Next question, anybody else? Ooh, you might have to make a little, make, can you? Uh, yes. Yeah. So in a time where it's really there's an imbalance between the masculine and feminine energy, where like kids are like more like emotional and like they have more Well, when you meet these people, you, you're nice to them. When you meet these problematic motherfuckers, when you meet these people who do fucked up shit to women, when you're around those type of people, you show them that all women are not like that. All women are, you know, we are all different. Stop judging each other. Stop judging it. Stop putting each other down. Like, yeah. none of us look a, like alike. We ain't fucking twins. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Stop putting, stop, exactly. That is real shit. Stop putting us against each other. There, in the music business, there's a lot of putting against everything. You're put against women. You're put against men. You're put against your fans. You're put against a whole bunch of people you don't even fucking know. The biggest thing about it, don't judge nobody. Don't judge nobody based on what you think you might know. You know what I'm saying? And when people come to you for help, when people come and confide in you, treat it like you would treat yourself. I think that's what the problem is right now. We don't know how to love ourselves, so we can't love anyone else. We selfish, all of us are selfish. 
All of us. I think that when you ask what are we doing, we're doing it right now. Yeah. Like in this room right now. Like I had, I had the opportunity to, you know, through my career to be able to make some calls to reach out to Rico to have her here today. I had the opportunity to meet Julie, who blessed us, who gave us the opportunity to have all of you guys here today. I met Leah, and together we created a conversation and a platform. That's how I met Emilia. And through Julie, we met Sister Paulette, who's doing uh, incredible things. But I think that we're doing it right now. Like, when, when I have women that I admire call me, like, yo, I just need to talk to you. Like, let me just... Make some time, or I just even want to chop it up and to talk about what I'm going through. I make time for it. We're all human, of course we can't take care of everybody, but I think it's up to you to want to make a difference. I don't have to be here. None of us have to be here. You guys don't have to be here, but you choose to be here to take time out of your day to learn and to create these conversations and to be a part of the conversations. I also think that right now, probably more than ever, women are in a way different position than they ever have been. And the patriarchy might not ever go away, but it's like, yeah. how do we, um, while also fighting it, how do we live our best life at the same time, if that makes any sense? Um, but I think that women are in a, a super powerful position right now. Yeah. Yeah, I really... It's on. No, it's on. I really agree with that. I think that being kind and open to one another First is women, and then with all of society, is the way that we're really going to move ahead. You know, too often, women, when they get a little bit of power, don't treat other women well. Uh, we're, we're, we're quick. You... Sometimes we're very quick to blame men, but I think if we all would just take a minute and try to be our very best friend, self, and to think put ourselves in the place of another person, the other person who's getting to us, and say, well, I wonder what that person has been through, whether they're male or female. It sort of opens your heart, and it opens your mind to think differently about others. Because I think, as you said before, we're so quick to, to judge people by how they look, how they act, how they, and we miss the core of the goodness that are in every, that's in every person because we're very quick to form our own judgments. And then starting with me, once you judge a person and put them in a box, it's very hard to let go of that. I mean, I'm sure people judge you all the time because oh, yeah. they hear sister. I was immediately like, oh my God, there's a nun. Don't cut me on the panel. I can't <laughs> curse. Exactly. Wait till I tell my mom. She's going to be so happy, <laughs> you know. Right? It's true. Yes. It's true. Yeah. So, but that's a lesson to me because, yeah, people could judge me because, you know, that's the first thing they think. Oh, she's a nun. I can't say this. I can't do this. Just she's like going to judge me. Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. all worried about this. Believe but me. Then, <laughs> I'm but traumatized then, from Catholic school. <laughs> but I do it too. You know what? It's just something about us all being human. And, you know, as human beings, we're very quick to form opinions about other people. We all put others in a box, and we have to work on ourselves. I think it's not easy to get beyond, you know, our first impressions and to take time, like you're all doing tonight, to learn from one another. And, I mean, if there's one message that I took from everyone here, it's the importance of being positive. Because every one of you has really spoken about how you have to be your best self and how you have to be positive. And when you're positive about yourself, then it's easier to be positive about other people. That's my philosophy. Oh. I wanted to say one, one last thing. I feel like since I have a son, it's only right that I speak on this. A lot of times we make it not okay for men to speak on their problems. Yes. Um, you know, sorry, sorry guys, for real, seriously. Um, we look at you guys like you're supposed to be strong. We look at your faces. We can't ever tell when y'all sad. Um, a lot of the problems start with us and a lot of the problems start with y'all. But I think another thing is really paying attention to how y'all feel. Like when y'all are sad, making sure that we are there for y'all because when we're on our periods and we have cramps, our boyfriends are... You know, they're our kings, in a sense. Like, they really take care of us. And 
in my daily life and dealing with so many women who look up to me and are like, niggas ain't shit. I'm always looking at my son like, I hope that I don't make you too strong to feel. Like, you are a black man in America. I hope that I don't make you too strong to feel. I want you to feel. I want you to be in tune with yourself. And it's, you know, it's hard for y'all to be that without being labeled as soft. And, I mean, we're, we feel. It's okay for guys to be soft. And I, that's coming from the most rowdy, rough, crazy bitch. Like, urgh, like it's coming from me. Like, it's okay for y'all to be like, damn, bro, this shit fucked me up. Like, it's, it's better than seeing y'all hurt and then y'all walk around smacking us, beating us, hurting us, treating us like shit. You know, we would rather just talk it out. Let's just talk about it. What's going on? We all need to be aware of what's going on with one another because I can't, I can't stand to see people walk around here holding shit in. That shit is the worst. I know what it feels like. Any, any, any other questions? questions? Right over here. Right over here. What you definitely have to start with first is accepting that she may not understand that first and accepting that you have to give her room to grow just like you've had the room to grow into your own spirituality. You have to give her the room to grow into accepting and understanding. That's hard as fuck, especially when you're the one who's younger and we feel like our elders need to be the ones that teach us. But... That's often why we get assigned to those elders because there's something about our innocence, so to speak, that allows us to learn about other things at times that our elders, you know, where they're at in their life, innocence is not playing such a big role. And so they're a little closed off to it. You come back around to remind them that that is in them and that they do have the potential to grow just like a child does and learn new things. Listen. I'll be honest with you, me talking about my stuff slowly but surely with my grandmother, you know, my mom taking my time of just expressing little by little and, you know, showing her, this is not what you gave me as my mima, but my abuelita gave me this. You know, for me, that's how it was. And, exp and expressing. Yeah. So you should, at a point, express to her that it's about... This is that connection that I had with her, and I want you to respect it, because that's how my relationship with her lives on. And I know you want my relationship with you to live on, and I know you'd want the same of that with me and my other grandmother. So how can we make this work? My Mima slowly but surely started going and teaching herself about everything from Islam, and I'm not even Muslim, but went from Islam to Buddhism. I mean, she went and learned about every different thing until she realized at her core, and I mean, Catholic church school, you know, girl, grew up there, you know, part of the, what is it, the Catholics Women's Society or, you know, the whole thing. She's got a whole group, all, all this stuff. <laughs> Love her. But still goes to church every Sunday, still goes to church for, you know, she goes to Christmas mass and everything while we all stay home. One of us drives her, drops her, picks her off type thing. So I feel you. But it's that thing of giving them that room to have their beliefs and respecting that you are gonna have different ones, that's okay. Give her that room to grow and expressing that this is a connection with a higher power and my way of connecting with God. That's your way, this is my way essentially. It doesn't have to necessarily be a whole breakdown that may not be what you need to do, but just expressing, this is my connection to God. I'm still doing what you do just in a different way, that's it. Give her time, give her the room to, you know, come around, you know, and explain that, again, this is also part of how you connect with your other grandmother and that that's something that even she would understand not wanting you to let go of with her either. You know what I mean? And the good thing with spirituality is 
There's room for Archangel Michael to come up in your stuff, isn't there? So you can explain to her. I still work with some of the saints on occasion and the archangels. That's something I've done with my Mima. And she's like, okay, it kind of is the same. I still would stick with my stuff, but I see why that works for you. And she respects it. And sometimes it's about showing elders that all of these core values are the same and that that's all it is. You just need something different because you're a different person. That's all it is. We're all different. The same way we need different multivitamins or we need a different diet because we don't have the same body as somebody else and we don't like those foods or we don't like this. It's because we're all different. And that's the same thing with your spiritual path. That's all. Guys, I'm going to um, step in because it's um, 6.30. Um, and I just, I just want to um, ask one question and you guys can all answer it. Um, you know, at V-Files, you know, our mission is to connect and empower youth, Right. So that means that if you're a young girl, like, we want you to be successful. So, you know, we have, like, many, you know, different verticals and whatever that you can excel in. But what, maybe you could share some advice on, um, you know, how to really succeed in the, you know, money isn't everything. But, like, you know, if you have money, you can be independent, right? And you can live your life. So what is your advice for our audience here on, you know, how to actually have a career and make money, right? Like, it's, it's not a dirty word. Money is not a dirty word. Talking about money is not selfish. You know, if you can feed your family, give your family a great home, you know, education, everything costs so much money. So if you can just share some advice on being a girl, like, in the world where, you know, there's a lot of shit happening right now and it's not really cool. Um, can you just go for that? Now you got five minutes. All right, I'll, <laughs> I'll kick things off. To me, I, I work with a lot of youth organizations, right? The core of it all to me is you really need to find what makes you happy. All of us have found, like our parents, you should go to school, you should do this, you should be a doctor, you should be a lawyer. But to me, when my mom was like, what? You want to do radio? That's not even a career. Like, my father literally stopped talking to me for a year when I left my house and left to pursue my dream. You know, whether it's cultural, whether it's spiritual. Guys, if you're serious about making money, being successful, you need to be in love with what you're doing. So when people tell me, oh, I want to be, you know, I want to be on the radio. I mean, like, but I always ask them, why do you want to be on the radio? See, when I wanted to be on the radio, I learned everything there is to know about radio and the business. Because you know what? I don't want to be on the radio and be broke. So I was like, all right, cool. I need to make sure that I find out in every way possible, picking people's brains, understanding, learning from people's mistakes. But whatever it is that you want to do, whether you want to be in the music industry, whether you want to be, you know, kick off your own clothing line, you better make sure that you are completely in love with your craft. You're working and perfecting it every day because there's someone always just as good as you. So what's going to make you different than the next person? And what I mean is educating yourself on the business because that's how you're going to make money, knowing how to make strategic moves knowing how the whole machine works, and that's what's gonna separate you with somebody who just wants to be a DJ because it's cute, you know what I mean? Or I just wanna be on Instagram taking pictures with an artist because it's cute. But no, I could do that, but I have a salary and I have benefits, and I'm preparing for my future and my children's future. So my biggest thing with everybody who wants to have a creative career, fall in love with it and learn the business of it, and always be one step ahead. Does anybody else want to say anything? I, I think it's important to um, also not waste money. That's a good way to, to keep your money. Um, I don't know. It's true. I mean, it took me a long time to learn that because I would literally spend all my money on total bullshit. Now, this might, this I'm going to sound a little petty maybe, but I, <laughs> I take the train a lot, but I also Uber a lot. This is New York, and transportation is really expensive. And I've heard people say that they don't want to Uber pool because it's like they're not going to feel, I don't know, because that's not a, a thing that they want to do because they're going to look broke or something. People, yes, yeah, no, people, people say that. And I'm like, I fucking love Uber pool. And I meet some really nice people in the Uber pool that I now follow on Instagram. Yeah, so... I'm down, I just like make little changes in my life to save money. It's crazy because being a female rapper, I feel like people think that you are supposed to be expensive, but. Or that you're rich Yeah, already. like I definitely was a mom like a year before I kind of like blew up. So 
I penny pinch by nature. Like, I literally can't even help that shit. Um, I be feeling like um, a lot of times, like, it, there is a lot of shit that you want to buy, but like I said, when you are chasing your dream and you are being your own person, you don't have to worry about brands that other people wear. I mean, I am a rapper, so I'm not going to sit here and say I don't wear name brand clothing, but you can definitely catch me in a dollar t-shirt, like, any day, any time. Like, I'm really on some chill shit, and that's very important, too, is that you're comfortable in what you're spending your money on, you know? As women, a lot of times we want to feel beautiful, and that shit is uncomfortable as fuck. And you spent that bag on it. You're going to wear it once. Girl, don't do that to yourself. You want to be a DJ. You want to do something. Invest in your craft. And all the cool shit will come later. Literally, I invested me and my boyfriend. We built my little studio in the basement. And that's where I made my first mixtape. And I didn't have no clothes. I didn't have no wigs. I didn't have nothing. But I was a good rapper. And I believed in myself. And people started sending me shit. Y'all know how the internet works. Come on now. So everything that you want, it'll come to you if you're like I said, chasing your dream, being yourself, people can, they can sense that energy and they'll definitely be sending you shit that you like because they know what you like and just shit like that. Make sure that you don't spend too much money on your image because, you know, you get there and people will help you. <laughs> Amelia, you want to go? Um, one thing I definitely want to say with how to make sure that you start getting money with it is like, especially I know in spirit work and things like that, people often feel that if you ask for money, you low vibrational or something's wrong. I've come to accept that everybody, I don't care what profession you do, whether it's art, whatever, you need to have the understanding that your time, your energy, and whatever the fuck it is that you're doing is work. It needs to be paid for. Like, that's the thing about money. Money is energy. And if I'm exchanging anything with you, then you need to be exchanging with me too. And that includes money. If I'm exchanging a product or a service, you're going to exchange that cash in my hand because that's just how this works. If not, then you don't need to be receiving my services, and that's okay. You know, I've had people say to me, well, you're living in a limited, you know, mind space. That's cool. You know what? That's why your finances is limited right now, because you don't participate in exchanging enough, so no money can flow through your hands. Like, I feel you. None of us want to waste money, you know? But at the same time, we do have to be mindful about actually putting money in and investing when you need to, because that's how money will come back to you bigger than what you put in to begin with, first of all. And second of all, what's for you will always be for you. So do not be pussy to ask for money. If you want to get paid, ask them to pay you. And if they and say it. no, yeah, and if they say no, then it's not for you. And that's okay. Do you want jobs that are continuously not going to be paid? No. So why are you going to keep accepting what's not for you? Instead, when you reject that and say, you know what, nah, you're not going to pay me, I can't do this, then Fine. That's they'll that's come back. Yeah, and it's, they do. They always come back and they offer you, well, we can do this much we now, you know? And it's also this thing where other jobs that are bigger and even better and more tailored fit to you will come to you. I've had things where I got sidestepped for certain things that I thought like, oh my God, that's gonna be so amazing. I found out the bitches got paid like $50. Uh, that's not enough to even pay my phone bill to cover my like my work line. That's not enough. So no, I don't want that fifty dollars. And you know what? That's important. But these women were there for five hours. I don't want ten dollars an hour when I'm giving you this much. No, that's not how it is. And that's something that you gotta respect about yourself. How much you command of others and just respect it. Everybody else is gonna have to respect it at a point. Pull so. <clears throat> I'm always happy to have the last word on questions. So what I would say is that you're never going to be rich when you're working in social work, when you're helping other people. You're not, you're not going to be rich monetarily, but you're going to go to sleep happy every night knowing that because of your commitment, because of your relationships, because of the help you've given, you've helped another person be who they are. And that is... That's worth more than money to me. Oh, what a great way to end it. I just want to say one thing. I have a question for everybody in the room. Who here is a creative, an entrepreneur, creating our own business, starting from scratch? Okay. 
Well, we are going to rule the world. Everyone else is get out of our way. I Absolutely. Okay, with the, I saw a lot of hands. And let me tell you one thing, guys. In order for you to guys further this, you must remember, whenever you see your fellow, you know, your colleague that has a business and they're working hard and they're trying to launch it, your way of supporting it is not asking for freebies, guys. Yo. It's actually purchasing them to help their business grow so they can be here. So if you really fuck with somebody who has a great clothing line, purchase a piece. Somebody who does spirit work, purchase a session. If your friend is throwing a party, hey, pay 10 bucks because you know what? You love that person, you love the way they create an atmosphere, they create an emo a, you know, a moment for you, but you have to financially support them also. That's the way we're gonna empower each other too, by that support. All right, guys. And I wanna say one last thing. <laughs> one last thing for Sister Paulette. So if you make 10 and you can give away one, one dollar is a huge amount of money. Think about that. So as you go and you start to make money, think about paying it forward and, and sharing it with people who are not where you are yet on your journey. So anyway, I want to say thank you. It's such an honor for all of us at V-Files to have you. Have a great night. Get home safe. It's going to rain.